Alrighty. I'm just going to start, since we're starting late this morning, because y'all read your emails. If you haven't read your emails, you need to start learning to read your emails, because the emails are something that you, we use in 2017, okay? And if you don't want to check your emails, then you need to forward it to your phone. Because there may be one day that I do something drastic and not come in for class, and you're going to be sitting in class like a dumbass. And everybody else is not going to be here. And who's to blame? You. So get with the program. You want to be an engineer, you want to be technology, read your damn email. Sorry. But I just get so sick of, you know, I, you know, around 1997, I could understand it. 2000, I could understand it. But come on, it's 2017. It's fixing to be 2020 in three years. Okay? The, oh, I, did, I don't check my email. You're a dumbass if you don't. Because you're going to end up getting left behind. So, and don't raise your hand and say, oh, you were talking about me. I don't know who I'm talking about. Nobody has called me and said, I didn't check my emails this morning. So I'm not fussing at anybody. If you're one of those people, then just take it to heart and check your emails daily. Because you have to when you're in the workplace. If you don't, you get written up and then you get fired. If you don't follow your emails or you get fussed at. Because there's people in my department that get fussed at because they don't check their emails. I always check my emails because I had all my emails directed to my phone. Because my phone is important, just like y'all's phone is important. So these people that walk around going, oh, I check my email. Mm, they just irritate me. Sorry. All right. Let's start with a boat problem. And I did some extra problems. Still ain't found my notebook. I'm going to look in this notebook and see if this is the notebook I'm looking for in here. I don't know if it is or not. But this is another rate problem. We're going to do about two or three rate problems that I haven't shown you yet. And then we're going to dive into work problems. And I'm just going to type this in because I can't write or flip. So, and then you draw a picture and then you see if you can work it. A boat is pulled in by a pulley 12 feet above the deck of the boat. A boat is pulled in on a pulley and we'll put dock pulley. That way you know that the pulley is on the dock. Some of y'all put it on top on the deck of the boat. A boat is pulled in by a dock pulley 12 feet above the deck of the boat. At 4 feet per second. Period. Determine... of the boat when the rope on the pulley is at 13 feet. All right, draw a picture. Label your picture. Find out what you have. Find out what you're trying to get.
Somebody tell me what DX DT is. Mm -hmm. I heard it mm -hmm. Enunciation and volume. Well, no, you're wrong. You're a loser. <laughs> what? Yeah, but what kind of four feet? Negative. Why is it negative? It's going, is it increasing or decreasing as it goes in? In other words, the, the length of the rope, is it increasing or decreasing? It's decreasing. And which way is it going? To the left. And left in mathematics is always negative. Remember, your rates are going to be your dx's, your dy's. Remember that. Rates. dx dt. dy dt. dr dt. Okay, now you need to remember that because what is the first derivative? Physics people, what is your first derivative? Huh? Acceleration. What's your second derivative? One of them is speed and one of them is acceleration. The velocity. Okay? So remember that. You got your boat. It looks like an axe handle or something. I don't know what boat It's like a blade or something. But remember, your rates are always going to be those three things. Now, it may be. DX dt, dy dt, dz dt. But the reason I used R, why did I use R? Because we're dealing with a what? A rope. That's why I used R. You can use dh dt for hypotenuse if you want to. But the whole point is, you need to look for these things. Usually you're going to be given one of them, at least one. Yes. Boat is being pulled in. Yes, yes, it is. I'm sorry. So that would be the argument. Thank you. Sorry. You're right. The argument. So I'm wrong. And make sure you read the question because some of some guys don't read the question very good. Like that. That'd be the argument. Thank you. Because that's the that's where the rate is coming in. Now, what are we trying to find? The other one. <laughs> this this one. What are we trying to find? Dx dt. That's right. What what about dy dt? There ain't no dy dt. The dot's not moving. All right. Now, 
what can you do now? Can you figure out what X is? Yeah, go ahead and figure out what X is. That's your algebra. But I'm not concerned with your algebra. You can do that anytime. How are you going to find your rate of change? By taking the what? By taking the derivative of your Pythagorean theorem. Remember, when you're dealing with rates of change, you're always going to take the derivative of a formula somewhere, somehow. Well, what about one-third power squared? Well, that's not applicable here. The only thing that's applicable here is your Pythagorean theorem. So you're going to have to take the derivative. What is R? 13 doesn't make a difference because 13 is going to go to what? Zero. That's right, class. So what do we got? 2x dx dt plus, wait a minute, it's 12, I'm sorry, r squared, we're trying to find dr dt, so we want to put the y in there, which is 12 squared, which is going to go to 0, equals 2r dr dt. I don't know why I write notes. I never follow them. I got them right there, bro. Wow. All right. Now, the reason I plugged in a 12 is because what are we trying to find? Dx dt. What do we have? Dr dt. If I took that r out, we would not have dr dt. So that means you've got to put in something else. Well, you're given 12. So plug that in there, and that'll go to zero, and that'll leave D or DT to solve for. Now, solve this for D X D T. Use your algebra and solve it for D X D T. Two X D X D T is equal to two R. So divide by two x and Yeah, I'm glad I had that training. Sorry, I can't tell. What training? We had the training. Huh? No, there were no What? Yeah. Oh, I, well, there's a biology teacher that still uses a TV and a VCR and have it on a cart, and they push it around. It wasn't here in the back corner back there. They took it out, I guess. Because I was Oh, you've seen it? It's like an archive, which or, or what do you call it? Antique. Lord, when I was in elementary school, we had the film strips. And uh, I was AV. I, I took care of all that stuff. And uh, then when I got to high school, the computers were starting to come in. And where the typewriter class was at West Side, the room next door, there was a closet. And they made it into a little classroom annex. And it had like four Apple, the old, the old Apple computer had four of them in there. And we went in there in, in groups of four and did little stuff on that. And, that's, and that was my 11th grade year. And uh, that's when computers started coming into the classroom. So, But when I got to Clemson, that was a good thing. Because when I got to Clemson, that's all we worked with, computers. And we were, we were uh, I guess, between 90... 89 and 94 work right in that area. That's when the colleges were really getting into computers, and I think that's a good thing because if I hadn't been in that little area, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know Jack 
or if I can come in after. But anyway, I'll show you. So dx dt divided by 2x, divided by 2x, 2 is canceled, x is canceled. So dx dt is equal to r over x times dr dt. Well, I'll be. Look over there. All we got to do is find x. So we go over to our handy dandy Pythagorean theorem. And we do 13 squared minus 12 squared is equal to C or X. Y'all check me and make sure I get that right. Because I have my notes over there, but I don't look at them. That's uh, 169 minus 144 is equal to X. Dang old 25. Well, I'll maybe use my calculator. X is equal to 5. So now we take our we take our 5 and our 13 and plug in 13 over 5 times what's my negative 4. And that's going to give me negative 52 over 5. Negative 52 over 5, which is going to be 10.4. Y'all check me. 10.4, don't forget all those physics schools. Feet per what? Second. Y'all check my math. So if you think about it, that, that, that pulley is coming in at 4 feet per second. All right? So it's kind of pulling the boat this way, but it's also what? Dang old vector, dang old resultant vector, dang old like that. All right? And the resultant vector is going to be negative 10.4 feet per second. Huh? Yeah, it's faster than the rate coming in. But you also got to remember the, 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 the weight of the boat has a lot to do with that. And you're on water, so there's not much resistance. Versus if you were pulling in a car without wheels, on a, you wouldn't be going as fast. Okay? All right, so that is a... I'm going to write that down because that's a test question. Uh, let's see, what did we do the other day? I know we did... Uh, the ladder, didn't we? Yeah. What else did we do? We did one other one. Yeah. Okay, so there's your three test questions right there. Fourth test question. Notes that I don't pay attention to. This is the dang old funnel. A 10 cubic centimeter, uh, a 10 centimeter tall funnel is being drained with water, or water is being drained, however you chromatically do it, at a constant. rate of 10 cubic centimeters per second. The amount of the funnel is 12 centimeters in diameter. How fast is the level of water dropping, no sneezing in class, with 200 cubic centimeters left in the funnel? 
and I'll even give you volume is equal to one third pi r squared h. Draw a picture, label it with what you're given and what you need. How fast is the level dropping? Now what is, how, put that in perspective. What are you measuring there? How fast is the level dropping? Change in H. Good. So you're looking for delta H over delta T. That's one of the most important things to find out is what are you trying to find? Some people would say delta V over delta T. No, you're not trying to change volume. The volume is given right there. CDCs, that's a new, that's a new, uh, that's a Hubertism unit. CDCs, it sounds like something in Atlanta Control Disease Center. Uh, Hubert, it sounds like someone uh, is asking to be added. So we need to draw a picture. I've received training on this. Okay, they give us the height. give us the dimension of the top of it. Now tell me what 10 cc's per second means. 10 cubic centimeters per second. What is that? dv dt. Exactly. Why? Start at the bottom. If you've got a plunger, let's say a plunger, you remember the push-ups? You know, the orange push-ups? Think of the little plunger. That's your DX, really. There it is right there. There's your plunger, and there's your stick. All right? On a cylinder, that's what you hope for on this. Why? 
because the R doesn't what on a chain on a cylinder doesn't change, but on a conic section it changes, and when it changes, it changes in relation to the height. So when you push that plunger up, your radius gets what bigger, and when you push it up again. It's bigger. So there is a relationship with the cone. With it. So you're going to have to do your similar triangles with the cone. One of the first things you do with a cone is to find the relationship. So what you do is you set this relationship up to this relationship. Okay. Now you can call this 2R, or you can call it D, or you can call it R here if you use 6 up here. There's several, three or four different ways you can do it. And we'll call this height. So this is very important. I'm going to take my handy dandy highlighter out. And I'm going to highlight this because you have to remember this, especially in the work problems, that's one of the first things you need to do. So you can set it up at any, you can say 12 is to 10 as 2R is to what? H. Cross multiply, and you get 2R times 10 is equal to 12H. 20R is equal to 12H. Now, what is your formula right here in R squared and H? Well, H is something that is given, so you want everything in terms of H to solve for what? Solve for R, Hubert. That's right, class. So R is equal to, okay, what does that come out to be? Four, we're going to both of them. One, three fifths. Somebody help me out. Three fifths H. So you need to take your, I'm going to take a green highlighter because that is very important. If you don't do what I just did here on the cone, you might as well just what? Don't do the problem. You quit. Just go to the next problem. You have to have that on the cone before you even start the problem. So remember that. Now, you know what you're given. You got your formula up there. So think about what you go ahead and take the derivative and see what you end up doing. But you don't want the R in there, so you need to change that at least. So V is equal to one third pi parentheses squared H, and that's three fifths H. So V is equal to one third pi, dang old nine twenty fifths. H squared times H is what? And now work with that. Take the derivative.
stuff. I wonder if I can actually put my stuff in. It's only been one, three weeks. Huh? That's when they said they couldn't find the company. important to them. Like I said, if there was 10 or 15 teachers keep using it, it would be different. But since it's just me, they don't care. I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. If you've got one person versus 10, 10 people are going to get more movement than one person. Nope. Yeah. So I'm going to write another email. I didn't read your email. Let's see. Uh, Ahmed is saying he got kicked out for some reason of the call, I think. Hubert. Mm, I recognize that name. Hubert. How are you supposed to tell me that you're on Skype? Anybody want to elaborate? Yeah, did I say anything about emailing me? It's called SA Directions. About once every time we Skype, somebody will email. And of course, I checked my email halfway through the class, so. Oh, me. Simple directions. So let me pull up Skype and see if I can still add that person. Ahmed, are you still there? Uh, he said it kicked him or something. Can you hear me?
Mr. Williams, are you with us? Yep. Mr. Thompson, I can't hear you. Wait a minute. Let me turn my speaker on. Hold on. What? Oh, Ahmed, are you with us? Yes, sir. Hold on a minute. Everything is the 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 speaker Nazi has been in here, evidently. <laughs> there, I heard somebody rumbling around. That was me. Okay. Ahmed, are you with us again? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Williams, are you with us? Yes, sir. Okay. Next time, send me a text. I didn't see your email until halfway through the class, okay? I apologize. I will. Thank That's you. That's all right. All right. Present desktop. You're not the first one. There's about three of y'all that email me, and I don't see the emails until halfway through the semester. When you're Skyping, you have to text me because that way my phone goes off, and I'm and I can hear it or I can whatever I'm gotcha. with the technology we have it here at Tri-County Tech we don't have a notification on our email that pops up that says you have mail I think that was one of the first things they put out when the email came out was you have mail but Tri-County Tech don't have that so maybe we'll have it you know 30 years after I'm sorry, but when it takes two semesters to get a to get a uh, license for GeoSketchPad, I'm a little bit skeptical on the technology at Truck and the Tech. And it takes well, it takes about two years to get training on the system that they put in two years ago. All right, so DVDT is equal to, and we can pull all of this out as a constant, and the three will cancel with the nine, three times, three pi over 25, somebody checking. And that would be, what's the, what's the derivative of h to the third? Three h squared, what? dh dt, good, you're starting to catch on. Hopefully. It's the same pattern every time. You find the formula, you draw a picture, you find the formula, you see if there's a relationship, and then you start taking the derivative, you start seeing what you got and what you need, and hopefully, if everything turn, turns out right, you have everything you need. So, do we have DVDT? Yes, 200. 3 pi over 25, 3H squared, DH DT. Do we have DH DT? Or is that what we're looking for? We're looking for it. Do we have H? Yes, it says it somewhere. Where is it? What? No. Yeah, there's, there's, I'm, I'm looking for it. Yeah, DVDT, that is the 10 centimeters. That is, the, hold on a second. Yeah, here we go. There we go. 200, you solve for H. DHDT, you're right. The DHDT twenty-five. I'm looking at my DVDT is equal to DHDT. Oh, I know. You got to plug in five H. Okay, pause right here. Now you got to go up here. Take your formula. And I'm going to erase this right here.
and do 200 200 is equal to 3 over 25 pi h cubed and solve for h solve this for h this is kind of a this is just algebra okay solve that for h and then we're going to plug that back into here so we can solve this. I messed up my own notes. You're solving for DHBT here. DBBT is, 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 is 10, 10, right? There. And DHBT is right here. And the reason I hit pause is because you got to find H. So you come over here and you find H, and that's going to be divide by 3 25ths pi, divide by 3 25ths pi, and that's going to be H cubed is equal to 200 over 1 multiplied by uh, 25 over 3 pi. Y'all help me. 25 over 3 pi, and that's going to be 25 times 200 over 3 pi is equal to h cube root. Now I did the math. Y'all check me. I came out around 8.1. Y'all check me. Somebody check it for me. Now, what do you do with that 8.1? Plug it in now and solve for DHBT. We'll do that on, I'll crunch all the form. Let's see if it'll let me. Watch the video because we're going to go back into, we're going to go into work a little bit, okay? For what you missed in class, okay? Okay, so now. We're going to take 10, we're going to read it, we're going to hit play again, and do 10. I hope I'm recording this. I hope I'm still recording. Let me check. Since I had to add those two people, I want to make sure I'm still recording. Yeah, I'm still recording. Sorry. So 10 is equal to 3 pi over 25 times 3 and 8.1 squared dh dt. So divide 10 by all this stuff. And DHDT is going to be equal to, I came out with, and it's negative because it's decreasing, it's being drained, so that's, and I think DHDT, that right here is going to be negative, yeah. Yeah, because it's being decreased. Negative 0.13. Y'all check me. That's what I got. So in other words, the funnel is being drained at 0.13 what? Feet per, what is it being? Feet? Meters or six cubic centimeters per second. So almost one and a half cc's per second.
And the tedious math is not really what I'm really concerned with. What I'm concerned with is that one, you can draw it. Two, do you know which formula and which relationship? Related rate, okay, such as the following, all right? Three, what you're given and what you want. And then four, taking the derivative in relation to, let me just do it. I learned that before. Find your VX, VY, VR over VT. In other words, take the derivative and see what's left that you don't have, or see what you need, or whatever the case may be. Okay. All right, here's your other test question. And this, this pretty much summarizes up all the questions, especially the examples that I showed you the other day. This is the walking man, bye-bye man. This is the uh, I only got five minutes left to show y'all, so open. There it is. Now, there's two things I want to show you here. One is the growth of what? The shadow, which is the, the this part. There's a green line here, and there's a black line. The black line is the shadow. Most of the time, you're going to be asked two questions. You're going to be asked the rate of the shadow, which is the black part. That's ds, dt. And then you're going to be asked, see this red dot? You're going to be asked how that's growing also compared to the lamppost. So that's going to be X plus S. X is the green line. I don't know if they show that here or not. They don't. Okay, I'm going to hit stop. Okay. I want you to draw this picture. And while you're drawing it, you only got five minutes, so I better, I better hurry up. It's kind of nice to have this for a long time, wouldn't it? Maybe I can ask college to buy it for this window. All right, this is your height, of course. And this is your hypotenuse. But X is going to be X and S. So they're going to put, and they're going to say that they're, they're not going to call this, they're going to call this Y. All right? And they're going to say Y is equal to x plus s. Now you don't have to call it y. You can call it l if you want to for length. I don't care. Okay? But the point from the pole to the red dot is going to be dl d2. Okay? That's the point from the pole to the red dot. Okay, so that's part two. That's part two of the question. Part one of the question is to find VS DT, which is the which is the rate that this black line is growing. And if you watch the black line, It's not constant. It's growing. Okay. 
And if that black line is growing, then what is the line, what is Y doing also? It's growing. So, this, uh, and if you look, look at the, look at the black, the shadow versus the red. And you can take several before it cuts me off. That one right there is at 11 to 29, 15 to 40. So you're talking, what, three times? It's growing three times the rate. Oh, gosh. Sorry, guys. You can't learn anymore. You can't visualize anymore because we don't have, we don't have the funds available <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, enhance your learning experience. I'm sorry guys. I'm just being very cynical. Okay, so let's take our example that we just saw and let's do a problem. This is the problem that was given on that little experiment they did for 17% of the of the teachers didn't uh, show their students how to do it. A person six foot tall. I have to use a person because I use man all the time. People will get offended. A six, a six foot tall person walks away from a 22 foot light pole. Eight feet per second. What is, I'm just going to kind of put this down here. What is the rate of change of the shadow and the when the person is 19 feet away from light bulb. That's A. B. The way your test question will be, or your homework question. At what rate is the tip of the shadow moving? Not growing, but moving. There's a difference. Okay, draw it and label it.
Wouldn't it be rough to be born on Valentine's Day? Yeah. Unlike Valentine's Day when you're all depressed and yeah, you go home and you drink half a half bottle of liquor and pass out on the couch, you know, <laughs> watching movies, yeah. <laughs> and I could be spending money on somebody. You know. So what y'all think about the dress? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know she's number one on Amazon and iTunes? I think it's hilarious. And they were on the news this morning, and the guy that designs it, he was from Puerto Rico. He's a, a le he's a legal immigrant, and he's Yay. And he was just so excited and he just and I just thought he was so funny because he was just all in it. He was just all about the love, about the love. And then he got emotional. He went It was so funny. They were just having a ball with it. I'm glad. I hope he makes a million dollars. You just have to watch him on on the on on the sound bite and he goes and they, they played this uh, a tape of a woman that says I just I'm just so glad you wore that dress because now I can say that I that I voted for Trump and I'm happy to vote for Trump and I won't be bullied blah 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 and and the guy the designer he just goes <laughs> it's just like one of the actors on one of the movies do I mean it just I busted out laughing Oh. All right, so we're going to draw a picture of this dude. Sorry, this person. And it's always a triangle with the, with the man. Oh. I'm sorry, I, I see this picture in my mind of a of a movie and a man walking in the, I don't know, that's why I keep saying man, I'm sorry. So just keep going. Six foot, oh, this is 22 foot, this is X, this is S. Now we're going to leave, what, what's going to, what's going to happen here? Well, the DSDT is going to change. The man is not going to change. All right. The man is six foot. He's not going to drop down to five five. He's not going to drop up to six two. So <clears throat> the shadow is being cast by the light. So the light is going to affect the shadow where the man doesn't change. Okay. We know we got DXDT. is eight feet per second. Now is it increasing or decreasing? It's increasing because it's moving which way in direction? Which direction? To the right. So it's increasing. So eight feet per second is the XPT. Twenty two foot light pole is the high height and the man is six foot tall. So that's all that's given. Now they do say 19 feet at 19 feet. So I'm going to put that out to the side at 19 feet, which will be X at some point. Okay. <coughs> we 
we also need to put that y is equal to x plus s. So even if you took the derivative of this guy, which would be dy dt is equal to dx dt plus x's, where did that come from? dt plus ds dt. That might be good for part two. Because what are you looking for for part two? You're looking for the y. So remember that. Now, you can make a here's a here's the related rate right here with these two similar triangles. So part one. Uh, 22 is to 6 as x is to x plus 8 or y is to x plus s. You could do set, set it up like that. I set it up as s is to s plus x as 6 is to 22. All right, algebraically solve that because you don't have to do anything. This is algebra. So to solve that, <laughs> that means you know how to do that. I got S is equal to 3 8 X. Now I want you to think a minute. What do we need? What is A? And what is B? So how do we find B S D T? So B S D T is equal to three eighths times D X D T. And what's D X D T? Eight feet, the eights cancel, and you're left with three what? Three feet per second. So ds dt is equal to three feet per second. So the shadow is growing at three feet per second. What's the red tip out here? What's it growing at? Or what's it moving on? 11 feet per second because what do you do? You take the ds dt and you add the dx dt, which is 8, and you get 11. Now, I'm not going to go into work right now. I'm going to go into work. What's today? Thursday. I'm going to go into work Thursday. What you need to do for homework is you need to work on as many work. I mean, work. You need to work on as many related rates problems as possible. I'm going to try to add another homework today. Adding some more. If you do at least five to ten of these problems. Then when we get to work, you it won't be half as difficult. Okay? Let me call the roll. And y'all gonna have to speak up. I know Miss Miss uh, Faith Faith don't have a microphone. She's just got a Tandy 1000. But the rest of y'all that have microphones, can y'all speak up when I? Yep. Okay. Ms. Tucker, do y'all have microphones? Quiz and Hunt, y'all have microphones? Okay. Yes. I got to call the roll. Yes. All right. Hold on just a second. I try to remember who's Skyping in, but as it grows, I. Okay. 
what is it, please? As it grows, I, my memory can only go so far. Okay, Ahmed is Skyping in. Yep. Anderson is Skyping in. Bradshaw is Skyping in. Edwards was here. Grant is here. But I don't know what happened to Hutt. He said he was outside in the parking lot. Khalil is here. Nabe is here. Patel is here. Pierre is Skyping in. Scobie is Skyping in. Sheik is here. Silver is here. Thompson. Are you Here. Skyping in? Yes. I think Thompson is Skyping in. Tucker is Skyping in. Wizenhut is Skyping in. And yeah. William is Skyping in. So the only person not here today is Mr. Hood. Okay. All right. So look for a second homework. I'll call it Related Rates 2. And I want you to get both of those homeworks done before we start Thursday, okay? Y'all get out of here. Miss Sheet, you need to see me. And the rest of y'all, if you got questions, holler. Skype people, y'all have a good day. See you. Yeah. You too, Hubert. See you later, Hubert. Have a great Thank one. You. See y'all. Yeah, it's going to be depressing. I won't be here tomorrow because I'll be passed out on the couch. <laughs> Stay alive. Okay. Thank you. All right, Miss Sheet. Let's go to website and see what you need to do. You need an extension on something? Okay, when's the test due? The test is due when? Today? Do you need extension on the test too? No, I did the test this weekend because it was just Thursday, but the fire came off the last day. All right, so you need to, okay, so I'll extend what the. Uh, washers and shelves. Washers and shelves. Right here. Yeah. That's what I wanted to look at. I even did the. Wait a minute. Washers and shelves. All right, you need an extension on that. Yeah, I can do it. Fifteenth. Okay, what else? Um, and there's actually one um, that you go into the contest. Um, okay. Um, one of the problems that I wrote down, they told me to simplify it, because it doesn't simplify the output problem. It doesn't even simplify it as far as I could. And then when I put it in the complete simplified form, it was too simplified for me. And I kind of, uh, when I literally wrote the correct answer, I said, I just wasn't sure if I could get it. Test, form one. Oh, shoot, I forgot to turn it. 